Hey, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can create an image slider program using JavaScript. You will need some images to work with. I would recommend finding three or more somewhat related images to whatever you would like to create an image slider for. Once you find your images, put them within your website folder and we are ready to begin. Okay, let's do this thing, everybody. So we will create a development to contain everything. This development will have a class of slider. Within this development, we will create another development. This development will have a class of slides to contain our images. Within this inner development, we will create three image elements. The first image will have a class of slide. With this image element, I will set the source attribute to be a relative or absolute file path. Let's begin with image one, whatever you currently have. I'll copy the name of this image, including the extension. So my image has a name of image1.jpg. And for some reason, if this image can't display, I'll add some alternative text with the alt attribute. Let's say image number one. And there is my image. I will copy this image element, paste it twice, or once for every image that you have. Then I have image two and image three. Let me change those. We have image two and image three. So you should have three or more images, depending on what pictures you're using and how many. Then we're going to add some arrow buttons. For the time being, that will be down at the bottom. So we will create a button element. Now you could use a left angle bracket. Let me zoom in. But I think there's a better option. There's a Unicode character for a left pointing angle bracket, which looks like this. We will use the Unicode character of ampersand hashtag 10094. I think that looks better, but you do you. All right, then let's create a right angle bracket with another button. The number is 10095. So that will create a button with an arrow that points to the right. For the previous button, the left one, I will assign a class of prev, meaning previous. And the next button will have a class of next. When we click on these buttons, we'll call a JavaScript function. We need to set the onClick event handler equal to a JavaScript function. For the previous button, we'll call a function of prev slide, meaning previous. And for the next button, we will call a function of next slide to go to the next slide. Okay, and that is all the HTML that we need for now. Let's go to our CSS style sheet. We will select our class of slider that contains everything. Class, slider, we're going to use relative positioning. These elements will move relative to their normal position using relative. So we have position relative. I will set a width of 100%, as well as margin auto to center everything horizontally. Now, just in case if our images are really big, I will set the overflow property to be hidden. So take our class of slider, select all the images. With these images, I will set their width to be 100%. And for now, I will set the display property to be none. We don't want to display all the images right away. So they should disappear. Let's add a little bit of functionality before continuing. Let's go to our JavaScript file. I'm going to create a node list of all the images within our class of slides. So I will create a constant of slides, which will be a node list, equals document dot query selector all. We will select all elements within the class of slides that are images, image elements. We will also declare an index of the current slide, let slide index. So this will be zero initially to start at the first slide. We'll be using the set interval function Set interval will return an ID that we can work with. So we will declare a variable to hold to that. Let interval ID. For now, I'll set it to be null, meaning no value. OK, let's declare our functions. We will have a function to initialize our slider. This will populate our web browser with the first image when we call this function. Then we need a function for show slide. There will be one parameter, an index. 
an index of the next slide we would like to go to, a function for the previous slide, prev slide, and a function for next slide, function next slide. Within our function of initialize slider, we will take our node list of slides at index of our current slide index, which will be zero initially. I will access the class list and add a class of display slide, which we still need to work with. And then we will call this function right away. OK, we need to build this class still, display slide. We will select all image elements that have a class within their class list of display slide. If an image has this class, we will set their display property to display as a block. We should get our first image. If you would like, although it's not necessary, we could display this image after all of the DOM content loads by using an event listener. Here's how. If you would prefer to wait for all the DOM content to load, we can take our document, add an event listener. We will wait for the event of DOM content loaded. Once all of the DOM content loads, pass in a callback to initialize slider. So this would work too, and I would say it's the preferred way. Rather than just calling this function initially, wait for all the DOM content to load, then display our first image by calling this function. Within the initialize slider function, we will use the set interval function. We will call the next slide function after a given amount of seconds. Let's say after five seconds, I would like to go to the next slide and display the next image, whatever is next within our node list. In order for us to work with this interval, this function is going to return an interval ID so we can clear it later if we need to. We will take our interval ID, set it equal to the set interval function. So I am going to console.log my interval ID just to see what it is. So let's save and run everything. Go to console. So this interval has an ID of one. If I need to clear this set interval function, I can access it by its ID, which is currently one. And we can get rid of this line. To avoid displaying an image if we don't have one, we can wrap these two lines of code within an if statement. We will check if our node list of slides, its length property, is greater than zero. If we do have slides, then display it and use the set interval function. If there's no slides, no images, then don't do this. OK, then we're going to go to the next slide function. We're going to increment slide index by one, slide index plus plus. And then we will call the show slide function, pass in our slide index after incrementing it. And that is all we need for next slide. Then we have the show slide function. Within our show slide function, we will access our node list of slides. Use the for each method to iterate through all of them. I would like to take each slide, arrow, do this. Take each slide, access its class list, then remove a class from the class list. We will remove the class of display slide. If it's time to move to the next slide, we don't want to display the current slide anymore. We'll remove display slide so that it's no longer displaying as a block. Remove these properties. Then outside of this for each method, we will add display slide to the next slide. Then we will take our slides at index of slide index. Access the class list of the next slide. Then we will add a new class. Add the class of display slide so that it displays as a block. And let's see if this works. After five seconds, we should move to the next slide. And that does in fact work. Let's wait again for the next slide. And that has worked too. We need to reset our slide index because right now we're going out of bounds. We only have three slides in this example. Within our show slide function, we'll add an if statement and an else if statement. 
If we reach the end of our slides, we need to reset the slide index and set it back to be zero. If our index that's passed in is greater than or equal to our node list of slides length property. If we reach the end, we need to take our slide index and reset it to be zero. Now, if we go backwards with the previous button, if our index is less than zero, we will take the slide index, set it equal to our slides length property minus one to set it to the end. If we're on the first slide and we hit the previous button, that will bring us to the last slide. These images should loop. Let's see if that does work. So we're on our green car and we should go to our blue car next. And that does work. Our initialized slider function is done. If we click on the next button, we should be able to go to the next slide right away. Now we have to work on the previous button and add some functionality to that. Within the previous slide function, we will take our slide index and decrement it with minus minus. Then call the show slide function, pass in the current index. Now we should be able to move forward and back. Now, if we hit the previous button because we want to look at an image, the timer is still going. We'll still go to the next slide. If we would like to take some time to admire one of these images, we can clear the set interval function by using its interval ID. So if somebody were to hit the previous button, let's clear the timer. We will use the clear interval function. We will pass in that interval ID. Our set interval function is still going to move the slides forward. But if I were to hit the previous button, that interval is going to stop. We are done with all of our JavaScript functionality. We're going to apply some CSS styling to the buttons and even add a transition animation to the next image. We will style our buttons next. Within our class of slider, select all buttons. I will set the position property to be absolute. Positions an element relative to its parent, meaning the slider element. With absolute positioning, I will set the top property to be 50%. These buttons will then be positioned on the Y axis at 50%, meaning the middle. Then I will use the transform property. I will translate them on the Y axis by minus 50%. Translate Y is a function. We're moving these buttons up by 50% of the element's height. That will put this button right in the middle. Take 50% of the height of the button, move it up by that amount. I'll increase the font size. Font size, 25 pixels. Or better yet, let's do like 2 REM. Okay, now for the background color. I'll set it to be black, but I'm going to lower the alpha on it. So it's transparent. I'll set the alpha to be 50%. And for the font color, color, I'll set that to be white. Okay, you can see our two buttons are overlapping currently. I'm going to remove the border around the buttons, border none, and change our cursor to be a pointer if we hover over one of the buttons. So these buttons each have a class, previous and next. Let's select the previous class. I will set the left property to be zero to left align it. And with the next class, that's the next button. I will set the right property to be zero to align it to the right. I'm also going to add a little bit of padding too around the buttons. Let's add some padding here. Padding 10 pixels by 15 pixels. That looks pretty good. We are going to add an animation at keyframes. We need an animation name. We will name this animation fade for a fade effect. From this property of opacity, I can't spell today, 0.5, meaning 50%, to this property, opacity 1 for 100%. When a new image is displayed, the opacity is going to be 50%, so it's transparent. Then, after the animation is complete, set it to be 1 for 
Now we just have to utilize this animation of fade. All images that have the display slide class, we will set their animation name when that image is displayed to be fade. How long do we want this animation to take? We will set the animation duration to be about 1.5 seconds. Okay, let's see if this works. We should get a fade animation when each new slide appears. We can move forward and we can move back. All right, everybody, so that is an image slider that you can create using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS.